Today on The Believer's Voice of Victory, Gloria Copeland and Billy Brim teach us how the Hebrew language grew. Root words are vital keys in understanding the true meaning of Hebrew words. Now, let's join Gloria. Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Believer's Voice of Victory. Billy Brim's back with us today, and we're talking about big stuff, end time, what's going to happen, what belongs to us yes. before that happens. Glory to God, and you don't want to miss any of it. Well, welcome, Billy. We're Thank glad you. you're here. Thank you very much. Uh, we're talking about shalom. And uh, tying that into the end times, which I'm going to do later on, uh, speaking of the end times and some judgments that are coming, there's a chapter in Isaiah, and he said, it's translated in the King James, I will keep you in perfect peace yes, mind. whose mind is stayed on me. Yes. And in the Hebrew, uh, to say a complete peace or complete anything, you say, you say it twice. Like for instance, um, yom is day. But I want to say every day, I say yom yom. That's how you say every day. So huh. shalom, I will keep you in perfect peace. What it says there in Isaiah is, I will keep you in shalom, shalom. Absolute fullness, absolute completeness. You and I can walk through anything that happens today on the news, tomorrow on the news. There's a scripture which says we're Hallelujah. not moved at bad bad news no. because we fear the Lord, and He's promised shalom, shalom. to keep my mind in shalom, in peace, Praise shalom, shalom, God. and to keep my body there. And exactly what does that mean, shalom? It's evidently more uh, than what we think. Because uh, when Jesus came as a little baby, uh, this I'm reading from Luke 2 and uh, verse 13, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. He didn't speak English, this angel. He would have spoken probably Hebrew. That's the language of heaven. Yeah. I, and, and there will be on earth, shalom. Shalom. Good will toward men. And so uh, what did he mean? Uh, there hadn't been peace from then till now, from the Romans up to the present day northern border of Israel and Korea, there hadn't been peace, really. And so what did, G what did God mean? What does yeah. he mean when he says what is he peace? Saying? <laughs> That's what is he telling to us. And so uh, I'm going to be reading right now from this book. Uh, this is a book by Edward Horowitz. And um, he taught in uh, the Hebrew department of a high school in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, this is published by the KTAV Publishing House. I'm glad to get this. And it's Billy, a kind of, it's a, it puts it simply. Billy didn't give it to me. I just took it. You know, uh, I, 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 I give it to you from Thank wherever you, they Billy. It. Bless the Lord. I think from your own bookstore. But anyway, uh, it's, we are going to look into here and, and find out the depth of the meaning of peace because the angel promised it and Jesus said he's going to get it for us. That's right. So what does it mean? Good. And uh, so uh, I'm going to start here in this book uh, talking to you and it's pretty simple, you know. I started studying Hebrew when I was, um, after my husband went to heaven, the Lord told me, I want you to study Hebrew in the land. I'm just a student of Hebrew. I'm not uh, any way proficient in it, but I do study it, and it's a blessing to me. If I had the Hebrew on one side in my Bible and I had the English on the other, I can look over there and you I can, can see get that the word, yeah. and I can see what it is. I can see when it's shalom in the Old Testament, for instance. Uh, so the Hebrew root, everything about the Bible is seed time and harvest. We know that from the New Testament. We know the parable of the sower. We know that what you sow is what you reap. And we know that God wants us to sow not sparingly. We know a lot of things about sowing and mm -hmm. reaping, but actually you're going to have to go back to the very beginning of the Bible and you're going to find out that that is God's principle. Things grow and they grow from roots. Oh, there's a psalm and I didn't look it up, but it talks about your children and it talks about, I'll try to look this up for later in the week. Um, it talks about, don't let the roots be twisted. You know, you've got little olive plants and you don't want those little olive plants growing up around your table with twisted roots. Hmm. 
And so you can see in people's lives, if their roots have been twisted, if they had a terrible home life growing up. Yeah. But thank God, Jesus can give you the peace that comes from being yes, whole. Amen. He can Wherever give you, you a start. whole new root system. He can give you something that He promised to get, peace with God. Praise and God. And when you have peace with God, then your root system straightens out. That's good. And your life grows better. So now we're going to see this, this root system in the uh, Hebrew language. So this is chapter 3 of his book, The Hebrew Root. We come now to the central theme of all word building in Hebrew. It is the central rhythm of the whole vast far-flung structure of the Hebrew language. And this is it. Practically all words in Hebrew go back to a root. And this root must have in it three consonants. Now, I think there are a few that have only two consonants. Uh, the Hebrews, uh, this is on page 22 for you. I'm lost, okay. Uh, well, your, I'm way ahead of you. I'm oh, you're way ahead. 45. You're over there in the book. Okay, I think she's got it marked up here, page 22. There you I go. I got it. Okay, you've got it. Um, I have seen that there have been some with two roots, two consonants. Now, the Hebrew does not print out for you um, vowels and vowel sounds. It was harder to write back in those days when they first began speaking Hebrew on the earth. They had to put things in stone and parchment was scarce. Yeah. So the consonant is what's going to be there. You know, vowels are A-E-I-O-U. So it's the other letters besides that. The consonants, the Hebrew consonants that they use. And um, I'm going to start here, uh, starting at that second paragraph, Gloria. On page 22? On page 22. Okay. Practically all words in Hebrew go back to a root. And this root must have in it three consonants. You can do anything you want to the root. You can use it in any verb form or tense. You can turn it into any one of 10 or 20 or more nouns. You can make it an adjective, an adverb, a preposition, or whatever you will. But no matter, here's the big thing. Here's the big thing. Turn up your ears, throw up, put up your antenna. Okay. No matter what you do, you will always see staring you in the face the three consonants of the root. You can never escape them. And equally important, no matter what you do with the root, no matter into what word you turn it, that word must carry in it something of the meaning of the root. So when you see a word on a page, you're going to see its root. And when you see a word on a page, that word that you're going to read, however it is, has got to have something of that root retained in it. Just like the root of a tree, there's whatever's genetically, if, if trees have genetics, whatever's in that has got to go, come out in the leaf. So it grows from a root. Now, I used to say, what is, I, I throw this little question out there, you know, kind of a little trick question. What is the most well-known Hebrew word? And most of the time people say hallelujah, but it's, not, it's not that. Which one? It, it's not either one of those. It's not hallelujah. It's not shalom. In fact, this is not only the most widely used Hebrew word, this is the most widely used word in any language. Tell us. Amen. 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 That's it. It's the word so amen. And so I'm going to ask them, uh, well, I'll just read his, what he says about amen. Where are you? Uh, this is on page, well, if you'll just turn one page over from 22, you turn one page over and you're going to see amen. Amen. Amen it. is a root of unusual interest. It shows you how far and wide a word can travel. The Hebrews loved the word amen. In it, they expressed their very hope that God would be merciful to them and grant them their heart's desire. From Hebrew, the word has spread to cover a thousand languages and more. It enjoys an unusual distinction. It has entered more languages and is used in more countries than any other word in human speech. Isn't that amazing? Now, the Bible has been translated into more than a thousand 
languages. Mm. But they never, they never translate amen into any other word. They always just leave it amen, like it is in the Bible. The root word amen means confirm okay. or support. And it has the idea of confirmation or support. Now, the Hebrews uh, have a, in this root system, if you would imagine it like you would imagine um, a wagon wheel. Yeah. And I have, a, I have something on this that I can put up for you to take a look at. It, it's like a, 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 a wagon wheel. And at the middle of that wheel, you're going to always see the root word. And then from the root word, the words that come from it by being, um, and I'm going to ask them to put that up now. So this, this system, this root system that you're going to see right here, and they're going to leave it up a while so you can kind of see it on your screen. It's going to be in the book you'll get. It'll be in my notes that's sent to you. The root word, amen, is in the middle. And that word means confirm, support. So, of course, the word amen, which we say is up at the top here, and it literally means, may this prayer come true. Amen means may this prayer come true because it has the support system of God and his word. So in this family of words, look what you see. In the families of words, you always see that middle, that middle uh, root. And this word root is, uh, amen, is a root. And one of its meaning is may this prayer come true. May this prayer come true. So then you're going to see just by changing vowel sounds and making, uh, and, and they come in a certain uh, patterned way that you can add beginnings or endings to it. But here's words that come from it. Amen. Okay. As the root. Now look there to the left. There's the word for faith. Glory up to the left right here. Oh, the word for faith comes from Amen. Can you imagine that every time you see faith in the Bible, you're going to look at that word and you're going to see, if you're a Hebrew reader, you're going to see, hey, this comes from our man. In other words, so be it. So the prayer is going to come true. Faith believes. But it takes faith. So be it. Yeah. And so, so faith is emunah. And that's one of the words that comes from it. Hmm. Now, if you'll look to the right on that wheel, put that wheel back up there, you're going to see the word believed. It comes from it. Yeah. So when you see this family of words, this Hebrew language is so rich because even though the little word that you see written on your page is amen, it has to carry all of this meaning. All if, this meaning. Yeah. And if, well, uh, if you see... It has to carry the whole wheel. Yeah. The, the whole saying? wheel is going gonna, is gonna to come from this. Wow. Look at the word, um, what it takes to make a prayer come true. It takes faith. Yeah. Amen. It takes you believed. Ha amen. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes truth, God's truth, yep. the Word of God. It has to be built on the Word of God. You can't have faith that you're going to get a thousand oil wells because it's not written in the Word of God. But you can see right here, truth. You can yeah. see that if you find it in the Word, you can believe for it. That's right. If you find that in the Word of God, part of the Word of God is truth, right? Amen. And if you, amen, you 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 can see. It's truth. And so you got to have the word of God before you believe something. Gloria, we just don't believe on pipe dreams. No. I mean, you got to have some, you got to have some support that's in this meaning. What is your support? This Bible, the, Bible, the word, that's Bible. the word. So you have to have the word that's called the truth. Remember Jesus said, I am the truth. Mm -hmm. You got to have the truth and then you have to have faith in that truth. You have to believe in that truth. You have to have here on this wheel is the right hand. And it, it literally has the meaning of strength. You have to have God's strength. Yes, you do. He's, he's the one that's going to bring it about. He's the one that's going to do it. You're going to find it in the word. You're going to believe it. And you're going to have faith in the word. But it's going to take the right hand of God to do it. All of this is in that little root word, amen. And every time you see right hand, every time you see faith, I'm talking about Hebrew read readers. See, we, you don't see any tie in the English language between faith and believed. 
You don't see any tie. I'm talking about grammatically in the, yeah. in, in the words and the spelling. But in the Hebrew, in every one of those, right in the middle is amen. And they know, may this prayer come true. So it would be easy to teach the faith message. It would be easy to teach, hey, amen. You know how it says in that, what does it say in the New Testament? All of the promises of God are, are yes, yea and amen. and amen. So, so you got the promises of God. They're in here in the word, in the truth. And then you've got faith in it. You believe it and you say, amen to this and you stand so in that faith. So be it. So be it. That's this whole, that's everything in this word, amen. So you see it as a Hebrew. You can teach. The teacher can get up and say, here's our lesson of faith today. Here's what you got to have for amen, to be able to say amen, may this prayer come true. Here's what you need. All in the same family of words. Mm. Now, I take this very literally. And you know, a preacher will be preaching along and he'll say something like, the world's going to the dogs. And people will say, amen. <laughs> well, I don't want the world going to the dogs. No. I don't believe it's going to the dogs. I, don't I believe things are going to turn out like God said. Yes. And so I literally, I never say amen. And uh, I, very, I very well know, and you know that I teach, and I've written a book on how to rightly divide the word. And to rightly divide the word, especially about end times, you've got to know the three groups of peoples that God talks to. And he talks in the word to the Jews, the Gentiles, which another word for that is nations, and then the church. So we know that in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, there were just the Jews and the Gentiles, the Jews and the nations. And in the New, any Jew, any Gentile can accept the Lord Jesus Christ and they'll be yeah. born again and they'll be a new creature. Praise Oh, God. Gloria, you remember I told you yesterday about that man that worships among us and he had seen Jesus? And uh, he had never seen him before. We know this man. He's not going to make this up. And Jesus told him, the church is going to have a revelation, they don't yet, of what it really means to be a new creature. Praise God. That'll be awesome. We're going to walk here, Gloria, yeah. as new creations. So I'm in a church once and this man is preaching and he's trying to get people to say uh, that they're Jews or Gentiles. And so he said, everybody who's a Jew, raise their hand. Not many raise their hand. Everybody who's a Gentile, people all raise their hands. I don't raise my hand. He sees I don't raise my hand. Everybody who's a Gentile, raise their hand. I'm not raising my hand and I'm not saying amen because I'm not a Gentile. You're all Gentiles, he said. I didn't, and they say, amen, amen. I didn't say amen because I'm not one. I'm a new creation. So I don't say amen at the wrong time right. because I have a great revelation that amen means may this prayer come true. Now you've seen how that works for the amen wheel. Now we're going over to another wheel and I'll just show it to you briefly today and we're going to go into it in detail tomorrow. So uh, turn in your little book here uh, to... Page 47, 46. She'll have it marked for you up here. Now this is, uh, and we're going to really get into this tomorrow, but this is just to whet your appetite. This is, we're going to be talking about the word shalom. That's what we're talking about this week, shalom. And shalom comes from a root word, shalem. And that word means be whole, be complete. You can take that graphic down a bit and we'll get back to it later. So Horowitz, remember he's talking to Hebrew students, uh, students in a Hebrew high school in America. And he says to them, it probably never occurred to you and it may faintly amuse you to know that when someone says to you inquiringly, How what are is, you? Uh, yeah, what is your shalom, they'll say. And here's how you say it in Hebrew. Ma shalom ha. Ma shalom ha. What ma shalom ha. Your peace. Or to a woman, ma sh shalom ech. So he's asking of, about your shalom. And he said it might amuse you to know that the real meaning of this is he is actually asking you whether you are whole. 
complete in one piece. They want assurance that no part of you, fingers, toes, legs, arms, etc., is missing or broken. The root meaning of our familiar greeting word, shalom, is shalim, whole, complete. If you're whole, you're probably well and at peace. So you can put that wheel back up there and we're going to get back into this tomorrow. We're going to get into it in depth. You see, uh, shalem is the root word in the middle, in that black part, shalem, and it means whole, complete. Now go at the top. These are the words in the spokes and there's a whole lot of more words. I just put a few on there for, for the sake of teaching today. Shalom is at the top, peace. It has one letter, uh, a vowel sound. It stands for a vowel sound in it that's been added to it. And so when we see this word, we know it's shalom. But the other three letters are the root word letters. So shalom peace means the peace you have because you're whole. That is the primary meaning. And when those angels said, he's going to bring peace on earth, they meant he's going to bring wholeness. Wholeness. Hmm, wholeness with what? Wholeness with God, for one thing. I'm going to look into this the rest of the week, what Jesus brought, what shalom means. So when you greet someone and you say shalom, mm -hmm. tell me what you just said. You mean be whole. Be whole. If you say ma shalom, you're asking them what is your peace? Is anything broken about you? But if you just say shalom, I love this greeting because it's the one used throughout the Bible. It's the one used in Israel today. I answer my phone, shalom. I do my radio program, shalom. It means be whole. I like it. Hallelujah. Mm, think of it, Gloria, be so whole. So when, we, when we're in a prayer line and we customarily lay hands on people and we say, be healed. Mm -hmm. You could say, sure. It's the same thing, Gloria. Praise God. It, in the Hebrew, it's, it, it, it's the same idea. Good. I like it. Hallelujah. Billy and I'll be right back. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.